Hello guys, it's me Karthik. Hope you guys are doing really good. So, so we are learning about the Quad Scheduler. What is a Quad Scheduler? Quad Scheduler is an open source framework that can schedule any jobs and you can directly integrate into any Java framework. In this case, we are using the Spring Boot, right? So we have learned how to create a job by implementing a job interface and we have learned how to create a scheduler by auto wiring a scheduler and we have used few methods like start scheduler stop scheduler and also a schedule method to you know schedule our jobs right so in order to schedule the jobs we need a trigger object and job detail object all those things we have developed a separate videos so that it's very easy to follow this playlist right we have learned how to run a job forever we have learned how to schedule with the help of a con scheduler right but all these things were actually scheduled in your ram memory only but uh, quad scheduler can also schedule a jobs uh, this job stores were saved in the database and from there you can always schedule that also possible that means when you are running a job all the job details can be saved in a database so that you can always recover them you will always have a record in your database that you can always you know get it from right so how to know whether it is running at a RAM that is at local level or at a database level. Okay. So when you are running a application, there is a one log that you need to identify. That is a local data store. This this log. Okay. Quads local data source job store. If it is at job store CMT, that means it is using a database. Okay. So in this tutorial, I am going to explain a step by step process how we can configure our quad scheduler with the database. Okay, it is going to have close to seven to eight parts. Okay, like this. So, uh, as it is more of a, uh, a configuration thing, I have already developed the application. I am just going to explain you step by step. Okay, so first things first whatever the spring boot application you have you need to ensure it is connected to the database if not then we need to uh, connect them so that part we'll going to discuss then we'll come back to the quad scheduler connecting with the database right so uh, what database you want to connect with any rdbms will work fine in your case it can be mysql db2 you know uh, maria db hsql anything is fine in my case, I am using MariaDB because I have already installed MariaDB and also is a very open source database. Okay, so uh, that you need to uh, make sure your application is up and running. In my case, my DB is up and it is running. Cool. Next, we need to connect our Spring Boot to the DB. Okay, so for that, what are the dependencies I need to add? So in my pom.xml, I need to have two dependencies. First one is Spring Data JPA in order to connect with my, you know, my uh, my database Spring Data JPA, and the second one is the MariaDB because I am using the MariaDB connector. Okay, so this is the MariaDB Java client I am using. If you are using something like MySQL, then you need to uh, identify the related dependency and you need to add them. You simply need to Google it, you'll get them. Okay, that is the second step. Third step is we need to connect with the application. Okay, so uh, there were a few application properties we need to add. This is a very, very common procedure to connect with any database like your JDBC URL, your you know uh, database username, password, and the driver class, uh, you know, so uh, in my case, my driver class is MariaDB JDBC driver and this is my URL to connect to the database and my database username and password. Okay, so this is my database. Cool. Now, so this until now we have seen how we can connect our Spring Boot application to database. I'm sure that you have already done it. If not, please follow those steps then then comes our quads scheduler with the database okay 
So further, first of all, there were two more properties we need to give. First one is this one, quad job store type, which needs to be JDBC. So we are saying it is a database, quad job store type and the JDBC initialized schema always I have, I have given this. Okay, cool. And here in this schema, in this schema, we are, uh, we are, you know, uh, creating all my tables. So that is, uh, that is a tables part. We will see, then we'll go back to the data source. Okay. So where are my tables and how I, I, you know, need to design my tables. This is also a very big question, right? Do you need to, you know, uh, design the tables to your recommend? I would say no, because Quads itself will provide a table. You just simply need to execute them into your schema because it is going to be very, very standard. Okay. So how to get those tables? Simply go to the Quads scheduler and download any latest distribution. Okay. Here, if you download it as a zip file, extract it and open that into your IDE. In my case, I have opened it into the IntelliJ. Then here, here, uh, there is a file called tables. Okay, they are using a DB2. Since DB2 is also a RDBMS, I can use anything. Okay, so here they will provide the list of tables. You simply need to copy all these tables and you need to execute them. Okay, so I have taken all these tables and I have executed as it is. Okay, so you don't need to worry too much. There were a couple of important tables that I would like to, you know, explain the purpose here. So something like, uh, something like this table, this is the main table, basically job details. So we have couple of jobs. Where are we, you know, job A, B, C. So we have couple of jobs. We are running those jobs with a scheduler. So, so the job details table will always have that information. Okay. And the second table is a trigger table. Okay. So this is a triggers, uh, triggers table. Let me go there and show you. The second table is a quasi triggers table. Why the triggers is useful? We need to connect to our scheduler from the job with the help of trigger. In the trigger, what information you will have? You will have information like how many times the job needs to execute, what is the interval of it and other details you will have. So that information will be stored. And if you are using a simple trigger to store the data, that will come and store in the simple trigger. We are using this in our application. So let me show you that. So we have the common utils in the trigger info. So you could see here simple uh, schedule builder where from the trigger info job we are using and we are building this. This we have already discussed in our previous video guys. I'll suggest you guys to use it, you know, go and watch it over there. This information go and saved in the simple triggers table. And there's also a con scheduler that we are using to, you know, a uh, schedule a job. That information will go into the, there's a separate table called con uh, triggers. So it will go and store the data over there. Okay. So these are a couple of tables we have. Then uh, I hope you guys have, you know, uh, following till here. Next is we need to build our quad data source object. So until now we have our JDBC connection ready. We have our DB, uh, our quad tables ready in the database. We need to plug these two in the application with the help of data source object. So for that, I have taken a separate uh, package called configuration. And here I have given a class called uh, configuration uh, type annotation. And here I'm creating a data source uh, bean here. Okay. I'm creating a data source bean directly here with the help of data source builder uh, object. Okay. Here, this is nothing but a quad data source. That's how you are going to tell your quad scheduler that please use the existing database. Okay, so that's all you need to do. Then let's start our application and see what is going to happen. So uh, here I'm starting the application. 
and you don't need to worry anything guys i have all the code here i have kept it here so that you can simply go and watch it sorry go and use it okay so i am running my application here okay so what it is going to do is i am not explaining what application it is running and all because we have already discussed in our previous video simply it is running few jobs okay that i can that i can tell you and uh, here it is starting the uh, jdbc related things first then you could see here it is local data source is job store cmt okay now you could see two three times this applic this is running right if you go to the job details and you could see one job data we have got it right now it is uh, it is it is ran for 20 minute 20 times basically because we have defined 20 here okay so if you see here ran it for 20 times okay so i have ran this for 20 times and uh, now if i go and execute the same now i don't have any data into the job details why it is happening okay fine no issue now i have a second scheduler called a uh, schedule forever here i am also running this don't go by the name here i wanted to run this forever but i have you know just uh, compromised to running it for 20 minutes i have this method here init method where we are building a trigger info object we are saying like please run for 20 times with a repeat value that means uh, in between every trigger wait for 1.5 seconds and initially wait for one second okay so this one i am executing from the uh, controller here okay so i have my rest controller so let me send this okay now if you see here uh, in run it should start executing and in the meantime if i go to the database and show you uh, do we have any data yes related to second table we have and uh, let me show you uh, triggers information by the time uh, it goes i think this will get yeah this one only okay you could see trigger information also we are having but if you observe it is getting completed it is getting you know uh, vanished from the db after the job is getting completed okay if you wanted to store this information about this job you need to have uh, a property that is set in the job details okay so let's go in that sense so let's go from the beginning i have this endpoint called schedule and here i'm calling a method here i'm scheduling a job here with a priority and schedule job method we have okay to schedule it before to that i'm fetching the job details let's go to the job details here cool and i'm building the job details object in this case they simply add store durably is a one field which you can keep it as true so when you are keeping this as a true that means the data will be stored in your database so that forever so that it can be really useful to you okay now once you have this uh, there is a one more as well which you can use it something like request recovery to set to true okay these two you can you can always use it okay and we are setting the data with the help of the job data map this is a standard right so now let me run my application and show you so now you could see it i'm running the application so what will happen is when you have uh, when you have set your durability to the true that means you are telling your quasi scheduler and the database like don't delete my job details don't delete my job details so that i will come to know uh, what are the jobs getting executed so that i can i know always have it uh, when when it become very handy okay so that information 
we are uh, saying here. Now you could see first job is getting executed and it will get executed for 20 times because we have configured like that. Right. Cool. Now let's wait for it to get executed 20 times. In the meantime, if you go and see here, this is my trigger information, which is cool, which is good. And job details here, I have the job details. Now you see here the execution is completed, right? But you have the job details because you have added them in your, uh, in your application, in your job details object. If I go and check that, uh, in the quad triggers, it is not having because this feature is not there at the uh, trigger level object. I have such this at the trigger level, but I could not able to find it out. So if you know that, please let me know as well. Here, something like uh, store durability is not there for the trigger object. For the job details, yes, we have that and we can always uh, refer that. So if you go to the job details here, what we have in that table. So this is a scheduler name and the job name is this job group is this and the job class is this and some job data which I don't think we could able to understand properly. Okay, no issue. So this is what I would like to show here. Execute the job. If you want to store the data after the execution is completed, then set durable field in the job details that we have seen. Right. Yeah. So these are the steps you need to follow if you want to store your job details uh, in the database. Okay. So I hope this video is informative for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. It's me Karthik.